Hi, Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm excited to share with you the fragrances that I wore during the week and also just a little bit of a vlog. So ee, I'm so excited. But before I get started, if you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and hit that button. Join the weird and wonderful family. It would be amazing to have you part of the community. And without further ado, let's get into this. So the first fragrance that I wore was Cherry Rose or the full name is A Very Cherry Rose Chocolate Patchouli by Melig Perfumes. Now, the reason why I wore this is I was traveling down to Calgary to meet up with Sunyata from Untamed Perfumes and Matthew from Meg Melig Perfumes uh, to just kind of hang out with them and, uh, you know, do some sniffing, do some hanging out. So I was really pumped and I was kind of fangirling out a little bit. So I wanted to wear my Melig perfume and um, I really, really enjoy this fragrance. There's Black Cherry and Lychee Accord in the opening. Uh, I get the cherry. To me, it's not a dark cherry, though. It's really quite a light, airy cherry, almost similar to what you'd find in something like Le Petit Robe Noir. Similar to that as far as the cherry intensity. So a little bit of a sweeter, brighter cherry. Probably the lychee is kind of helping it become that. And then in the middle, it's got this rose. The rose is really quite soft. It's powdery. Uh, very, very feminine and delicate feeling. And then the base is chocolate and patchouli. What I find really interesting about this fragrance is when you first spray it on, you get the cherry, you get the powdery rose. It feels very light, spring-like, feminine, innocent. And then as it dries down on the skin, spices kind of start coming out. The patchouli is kind of a chocolatey patchouli. So a little bit spicy, a little bit chocolatey, not dirty. Uh, just sometimes the patchouli note comes across kind of like spices. I just think that this is such a morpher and so cool. It's such an interesting fragrance. When you first put it on, it feels innocent. It feels perfect for the daytime and it's a super long lasting fragrance. So it sits maybe a little bit closer to the skin after about four hours, but it lasts for a good eight, 10 hours on the skin. Uh, so when it's in projection mode, it's that light airy kind of, uh, um, kind of a brighter cherry with a powdery rose to begin with. So super alluring and feminine. And then as it dries down, it gets a little bit more naughty with that patchouli and that chocolate, a little bit spicy, a little bit sexy. So this is such a cool fragrance. If you put it on and you're going to be out all day and then you want something in the night that's a little bit more just a little bit more sexy. Uh, this one actually would work for the whole entire time. So uh, very, very cool fragrance, very neat experience. I love it when fragrances morph. So this is awesome. Next fragrance that I wore, it was a little bit hot this one day and I was so excited because spring, I thought spring had sprung, it's freezing out today, but uh, it seemed like it was kind of coming. And so I pulled out La Vie Belle Le Clat. Uh, I wore it once in the winter time and didn't enjoy this at all. And then in the spring, this just is so fantastic. It's got a bit of a juicy opening. I think there's bergamot in here. It's just a mouthwatering, juicy kind of fruit feel uh, in the opening, not overly citrus. But then as it dries down, this beautiful kind of orange blossom emerges. It's a very sweet candy-like orange blossom. And that's kind of the, the star of the show is that orange blossom. Stays fairly linear. It projects beautifully. Like I noticed the projection pretty much all day. You're going to get little wafts of it. So the scent bubble is just beautiful. Um, I enjoyed wearing it so much. I wanted to wear it the next day, but didn't. Uh, but I'm so happy to have this one. And I just think it's the presentation, like the bottle with kind of the cut glass is so, so cool. So really, really enjoyed this. This totally blossoms and blooms in the, the warmer weather. It's a very pared down version of um, La Vie Belle. So uh, I think it feels a lot more fresh, a lot more current. Um, there is patchouli listed, but I feel like the patchouli is pulled way back. You get some vanilla in there still. The gourmand is pulled back as well, so I'm not really getting a whole lot of gourmand anything. It's mainly that floral. There's still a powdery quality from the iris, but overall, uh, this is just a delicious, sweet, 
uh, candy-like orange blossom that is perfect for spring and summer. Oh, it's so beautiful. Okay, next, I just want to talk quickly about uh, my little shopping trip with Sonata, or part of it. I'm going to save the other part for my haul. Uh, but uh, we went to Holt Renfrew. We don't have a Holt Renfrew in Edmonton, which just really saddens me. I went to the Guerlain counter. I'm just so mesmerized by those gorgeous Guerlain bottles. And so uh, I chatted with the salesperson and she was sharing with me the three uh, fragrances that are the best sellers in that line and then just showing me a little bit of how you can uh, design your own bottle so we're gonna watch that what is your favorite girl on fragrance out of this whole entire line for starters uh, before is uh, this one I love the Rose Barbara and uh, the old name is uh, towards the Rose okay and uh, but they changed the name now and uh, this one is the Rose base and uh, now uh, Naironi is my favorite. Naironi is the uh, is orange the flower, uh, but uh, orange uh, uh, when it's closed, right? Yes, it's not open yet, not blossom. It's a very beautiful the uh, not not very beautiful the uh, perfume. And uh, they yeah, I I just I I just wanted to mention like I did smell this one and I was amazed because the neroli like normally I find neroli quite sharp, but in this one it smelled so beautiful. Yes. So that's now your favorite one. Yes, now is it's my favorite one. Cool. And uh, we also have the, this this uh, Naironi one have the uh, body wash and the body lotion. Okay. Yes, and uh, it's bigger size. Oh, and, uh, bigger than that. Yes, and the refillable. Oh, cool. Yes. Okay, so you love that one. You love the Roses and, Barbara. Yes. And then this and, one also the top seller. So this one's super popular. So out of all the Guerlain fragrances, Angelique Noir, Roses Barbara, and um, Neroli. the Neroli one are the most popular. Best selling, eh? Yes. So gorgeous. Uh, you can customize the bottles here at Holt Renfrew. This is in Calgary. Yes. Uh, and so you can get all these different types of tops. And you guys do, do you do different uh, kind of uh, wraps on them too? Yes. Okay. We have the different color, but uh, uh, we didn't prepare the new uh, the rock. Right. But, but uh, we we just uh, prepare for the uh, top. Okay. Yes. So yeah, you can choose whatever top you want, and they're very very cool. Yeah. So whatever you want for any of the bottles. Yes. Very cool. Then I moved on to this other area that had Killian. It had. Aqua de Parma. I smelt my beloved Mandaloro de Sicilia. I would say that one is actually my favorite out of the line. I didn't smell them all. It's so nuts because I get so pumped when I go to these stores and there's so many fragrances like all the Killians, all the Gucci's, all the Hermes, like all the everything. And then I basically kind of am like a deer in a headlight and I don't sniff half of them. But part of it too is your nose starts to get a little bit, you know, there's only so many you can smell. So, you know, I pick the ones I really want to smell. So didn't get to experience a whole lot of them. But what I love is the Gucci line and the way they display the fragrances. It's so beautiful. And the salesperson was so vivacious and engaging and amazing. So here's the clip of that. Which one is this? This is Tears of the Moon. Tears of the Moon. And you said this one's the peppery one? This one's the light one. This is like oh. white flowers, a little bit of the valley, super light. Like this is Loving Your Storm Kissed. Okay, this guys, one. Voice of the Snake. Where is it? Right here. It's dark and and sexy. <laughs> we'll give you a little chi chi. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, and it's just, it's really quite sexy oud. Whereas this one, where was the one that you? This one you yeah. liked. So this, this one, one here is rose, is, right? Is, yeah, but it's, it's a lot more full because you've got the damask rose and the, uh, the oud of port. Oh, okay. So it makes it a little bit softer around the edges for you. And then the other one you cross liked was... Which one do you like? I I love Tears of the Moon, which is actually surprising because I'm not usually a white flower kind of girl. Okay, so that's the one you let and us smell that we both like. my all-time favorite, you guys, is so simple. 1921 for their 100th anniversary. 
basically just lemon and neroli mixed together. It just it's just the nicest, freshest, unisexy smell around. For did me. you say smell arama? Smell I did, did I say smell <laughs> I don't know, but I hope you did. I, I hope I said that. If I didn't, you're welcome to edit that. <laughs> yeah. No, I love smell arama. <laughs> I actually, the Tears of the Moon, I thought was really pretty. Where is that now? The Tears of the Moon is very now, though. You know what I mean? We're all feeling yeah. like spring. So we're all... You know what? That's true. Like, we've just switched gears, right? Like, yeah. in our head, we switch gears. We're off, we're like, we're off the heavy yeah. stuff, and we're just are hoping for spring, right? Yeah, Yeah, because normally I'm into the, the darker... Uh, and the darker but... is fine, too. Just a little more nighttime. Yeah. A little more honeymoony. Yeah. A little deeper sexier we tend to leave these ones for the winter for yeah sure. for sure for sure cool thank you thank you hi again <laughs> <laughs> these can only be bought in canada at holt renfrew and those are the ones that and we were just talking about gucci alchemist garden they're so cool and they're very cool. awesome thank you and then uh she gave us uh some like the the ones that we liked the best out of the Alchemist Garden line, she gave them to us. So I have the Voice of the Snake, and I believe that was quite a, a an oody one. It was really gorgeous, very dark. Can't wait to sample that one in the more in the autumn. Uh, Love at your darkest. Uh, Tears from the Moon, which was a little bit green, I think. So I think maybe a little bit better for um, you know the summertime. I will review all of these ones for you. It was so nice of her to give us the fragrances. And then she also gave us the new, I think it's the new um, uh, En Jardin de Synthère from the Hermes line. This was really, really pretty. I didn't test it on skin, but I did smell it in store. So can't wait to review that. Really, really impressed with all the sales staff at the Calgary Holt Renfrew downtown. Uh, great job, especially the ones that I chatted with. They were so, so friendly, so knowledgeable, really, really impressed. It was really fun. I just wish we had a whole red fruit here. Like, why? But anyway, it, it made me love Calgary more. <laughs> So the next fragrance that I wore was Hanne Mori by Hanne Mori. Apparently this smells very similar to Ylang and Gold by M. Mikalef. This one came out first. Uh, it's relatively affordable and, uh, you know, for the longest time I didn't love it because it's a little bit synthetic feeling. It's very uh, candy-like vanilla kind of, like there's a bunch of fruit notes in it. Uh, I don't get uh, really the fruit notes. It's very synthetic feeling, but it's somehow just amazing. There's a smoothness that comes from the Ylang Ylang in particular. And I think that's part of it. I am loving Ylang Ylang these days. So that that kind of buttery, almost slightly banana-esque vanilla-y feel that you get from, vanilla, uh, from Ylang Ylang. I'm just living for it. So this is smooth. It's kind of a little bit creamy. There's Ylang Ylang, Jasmine, Rose, and Peony. I'm getting mainly that Ylang Ylang uh, coming out to play for sure. Like I would say the Ylang Ylang is the star of the show. It doesn't have vanilla listed as notes at all. So it's uh, sandalwood, like there's a bunch of woody notes. I don't get any of that. I don't get the fruit other than maybe like a synthetic slight strawberry-esque vibe mixed with that little bit of banana, banana-y feel from the Ylang Ylang. It smells relaxing to me. It smells kind of creamy and dreamy. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's uh, uber synthetic. I'm going to just say that outright. It's uber synthetic. It's taken me a long while to warm up to this, but I actually really like it. It's synthetic. It's sweet. It's somehow a little bit dreamy feeling. Uh, it would be in the list of fairy fragrances, but not green, if that makes sense. Uh, it's just kind of, kind of, it's delicate uh, it's uber feminine. It's very sweet. It's synthetic, but it's kind of really awesome. It's um, not. It's not a major long laster. So four five hours, like it. It then kind of becomes a skin scent. It stays on for longer than that. Uh, but while it's on, like, so that four or five hour period, it projects beautifully. So really neat fragrance. I think it's pretty affordable too. 
And I'm definitely gonna be wearing it more this spring because it's just kind of my vibe lately. Next fragrance that I wore was Orchidée Rouge by Soradora. Now this fragrance is primarily a vanilla, but with a lot of extra yumminess thrown in. So there's caramel, there's rum, there's almond. There's a bit of florals in there. I sprayed the box. Um, it smells really yummy. Uh, it's in this, it, It's definitely gourmand. There's a bit of a milky quality to it. I would say a little bit powdery, uh, very, very delicious smelling. So on the skin, very, very delicious. I find that this one sits a little bit closer to the skin. Uh, that said, it's so extremely scrumptious. Uh, yeah, I <laughs> I really love it. Like, I think it's really sexy. It's one of those fragrances you could put on, like, if you want to smell like a scrumptious edible snack and you're wanting to spend a little bit of time being kind of close to your significant other, uh, this one is going to be amazing. It's also gourmand without being too heavy. So this is one that I feel like would be beautiful for a spring and summer evening. Uh, just a gorgeous fragrance. So I was excited to try it. It smelt a lot more fruity to me uh, when I smelt it just spraying it on a card somehow. There's bergamot and orange. And so that came out a whole lot more on the card than on my skin. On my skin, I got the caramel and the almond and the rum and the vanilla, and it felt a little bit uh, like a dulce de leche feel uh, on the skin. Just really rich and smooth and very scrumptious. So really enjoyed wearing that one. And the last fragrance that I wore was Amouage Sunshine. I am telling you, like, first of all, this is, uh, this is my favorite bottle in my collection. I love it. The bottle actually makes me feel almost teary. Honestly, everything makes me feel teary. So for what it's worth. But um, I, I love the sparkles in this bottle. I'll put a, an insert so you can see. Uh, I just love the sparkles in this bottle. I love the cap. I love the emblem on the front. The fact that it's raised up. It just looks so luxurious. So this is definitely uh, my favorite bottle. And the fragrance... Um, I would say that this is one of my favorite fragrances at this point. Uh, again, it's a bit of a morpher. I just love when fragrances morph. This one is almond heavy. There's white tobacco in here. There's osmanthus. So there's a slight kind of peachy vibe. Uh, it smells like a warm, hazy, luxurious day. Uh, the more that I wear this one, the more that I love it. Um, it's it doesn't feel like sunscreen. It, like Although it's called sunshine, there's no semblance of sunscreen or anything like that. I don't know what it is about this fragrance, but I just find it, it extremely luxe smelling, like it smells like luxury. This is just an absolutely gorgeous fragrance. It's blended so beautifully. Um, the, the notes that come out for me the most is the almond and the osmanthus and the white tobacco flower. There's a bit of a humid feel to this fragrance somehow. So it feels very relaxing. It smells like you're smelling humid air with a bit of a breeze. Maybe it's really quite warm out, uh, but there's a bit of cloud somehow. That's the feel it gives. So it's very relaxing and restful. What I love about this too is the longevity and it kind of morphs as I wear it. So it just kind of gets a little bit more vanillic and whatnot at the end. In the beginning, it's a little bit more almond osmanthus. It's just a neat fragrance. And every time I smell it, it kind of smells a little bit different. Uh, it, I, just, I just love it. It's very, very unique. It's one of the most unique fragrances I have in my collection. Uh, there's a few that are unique. But this one is also probably, I would say the most palatable amouage. So if you're new to that, uh, if you're new to that line of fragrances, I've smelt a few of them and I would say that this is probably uh, a great one to start with. Um, yeah, I just, I just think it's amazing. I like, I, I love this fragrance. And that is it. Overall, a really great week in fragrance. I really enjoyed trying Orchidée Rouge, but for me, the highlight wasn't the fragrances. It was meeting those wonderful salespeople. I love chatting with people in the store uh, and just getting a sense of what they love, what other people love. To me, that's always really fun to do. So I uh, hope that you enjoyed. Tell me what your favorite fragrance was. Did you have a hit? 
Did you have a miss? Leave it in the comments. And other than that, I hope you have an amazing week and we'll talk to you soon.